Morning. I love your social proof con conference. Where did that come from? Why did you feel the need to start your own conference? And can you, you know, I know that earlier this year, um, it took it, it, it took place in March or April or so. April, yeah. Yeah, amazing conference. Why did you feel a need to start this conference? And you had some heavy hitters at yeah. your conference. And I want to touch on kind of if you build it, they'll come. I don't know that when David started this T-shirt line and went to the mall and had this kiosk that you foresaw that one day you would be educating, inspiring, motivating future leaders, have a conference and be in direct con contact with so many amazing entrepreneurs who were down to do the same thing. I want to give back. Yeah. Like, like, where did that come from for you? Uh, I mean, I was doing small events anyway. So I do like little workshops in the city, you know, do events in the city. And then I went to a conference. Um, Shouts out to my man, Drew. Uh, uh, I went to a conference and they had a thousand people there. And I was like, yeah, I could do that. Is that the first conference you ever went to? No, nah, it wasn't the first conference, but it was, the f it was a conference that I went to where I knew the person and the person seemed just like me. <laughs> there you Drew go. Didn't, Drew didn't seem like he was like above me. But it was a thousand people there. I said, "Oh, I can do it too. Let's do it." <laughs> that was it. You, you, you put the plan together and you do it. I'm just not a, my, I, I'm just not afraid of like not getting it right. You know what I mean? Which I think is incredibly important. You know, again, it goes back to what we talked about about failures you have to be willing to take a public L. And doing a conference, doing any live event, unlike, you know, doing a podcast, unlike working behind the scenes, you run the risk because you really are putting your nuts out there. You put- Yeah, you can't like, hide it. <laughs> you, you can't, can't hide I was, it. I was yeah, I was telling my, I was telling my man, you know, if I, if I release a book or a product or a course, you don't know how many I sold. But when I put on a conference, ain't no way to hide how many people came. <laughs> 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 ain't no way to hide it, brother. Now, now, how did you get so many influential people into your conference? Did Were you surprised yourself? Because how, how many was it that, that, how many speakers was it? I mean, we had, like the first year we had 30. The second year we had... Uh, 50. So incredible, man. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, it's um, one, it's just Atlanta. I mean, it, once you're in the space, it's you're in the space. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, you know, other people who are in the space, you just reach out. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's almost like if, if you play basketball every day, and you're looking for 10 people to play basketball with, you probably have their numbers because you play every day. You know other people who play every day. So it, it's, no, it's nothing to get a game going. I know some people that hoop. Oh, I hooped with them last time. Oh, other week I hooped with them. So these are people that I did events with and I see them out and, you know, we doing the same thing and I see them on social media. I comment on their stuff. They comment on mine. That's it. You making it sound a lot easier than what it really is? Wait, but or or is or it's just as easy as I'm making it. I do, on live, I, 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 I do live events. And one thing I would tell you, number one, you can't hide. That's number one. But yeah. you might as well be ready. When you commit to it, it is it's your name, it's your reputation, it's all those things yeah. online. When you're doing live events, anything, Murphy's Law you know, is in effect. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And you have to do as much pre-preparation as possible. But you 100%. very, very successful people. And I love the, 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 I love the idea that, yes, you know these people. 
and you have had some level of communication with them. But <clears throat> people are busy. People are doing things. Let, let me give you the game. I'm going to give you the game. Go ahead. Okay. So you've, you've accomplished a certain level of success, right? Yep. What do you offer? Or, or what, is, what do you have to sell? Myself? You, yeah, you. Uh, are we, because it's multi-layered, but if you are, are talking- Give me a product or a service that you offer. Product, you're talking about my marketing expertise. It's, yeah. you know, 20 plus years of being a marketer for, you know, some of the top brands, you know, in the country. Right, so so you do, you do marketing, like you can take on a, a marketing client, right? Hands down, without thinking. So, I'm telling you, I'm going to have 300 people in a room. I don't got the money to pay you, but I want you to teach this 300 people a little bit about marketing. And I'm sure if you do, if you do your part, somebody's going to hire you. Would you come? I would absolutely come. But my motivation and what I think I was trying to get to, my motivation would be you. It would right, be but, 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 but. Outside of me, outside of me, just outside let me of ask you, you a question. Okay, but but again, and this is a this is a, a very philosophical conversation. Yeah, I, I do things that are purposeful to me. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. I have never ever moved for money. Ever. Okay, well let me let me put it this way. Go ahead. Out of these three hundred people, I'm bringing two hundred high school students to this building we to go. learn marketing. Would you? Come? There we go. I would come in a heartbeat. I would come in There's a heartbeat. A Number one, the person I asked, mm -hmm. or the person that asked me, I respect. Mm -hmm. Number two, now you're in line with my purpose. Right. So here's here's my point. Go ahead. I told that same story fifty times. I find out what you want. And I'm telling you, all these people are going to be there. Of course, as an entrepreneur, you are thinking of an opportunity. Like, I mean, you might want to help people, but as a businessman, you think, like, you see the numbers. Or I know what I do. In front of 300 people, I know I can pick up a client. Or it might be that, you know, we're, we're bringing students to the building. Mm -hmm. Even not knowing me, even not knowing me, it would make good sense in your head. Either, if somebody says no, they're either really bad at math or they don't like me. I could, I, I could take either one of those. But the question was, how do you get so many influential people? I'm telling the speaker that there's going to be a thousand people there. And I can't guarantee that a thousand people is going to be there, but I'm telling them in my head, I see a thousand. But now I got 50 speakers. And now I can take the fact that I got 50 speakers and go get a thousand people because I'm selling the speakers now. Yep. So it's not... In my head, I don't see it as a big problem, and I see it as simplistic because I'm just not overthinking it. In my head, I see a thousand people, so I'm telling everybody it's gonna be a thousand people there. And then I'm telling the crowd, yo, we're gonna have some of the most powerful speakers there before I have anything. So in our head is the story, like you said, the stories that we create. Anything I thought was too big isn't as big for somebody else, even though we're in the same space doing the same thing. It's just the mindset. I love that you shared that. I love that you broke it down the way that you did. I really think that's going to help somebody. Yeah, okay. can, can we talk about, this? stick with this mindset for a second. Because I thought when I was coming up, I was unique. And I come to realize being around people like yourself and other people who I, who have achieved a certain level of success. I, I, I've been telling people since I was young, I don't live in the real world. I just don't, <laughs> right? Like, I don't know how else to put it. I am a delusional thinker. But in order to be, in order to be successful, you have to be. You have to not live in the world of reality because reality is scary. Reality oh. is what's been done. And if you compare what's been done to what you have the capability of doing, you probably won't get started in the first place because you'll be like, well, you know, I've never done 
anything beyond a certain point before. Mm-hmm. But if you don't live in, and I tell this to any entrepreneur, like you almost have to be a delusional thinker. You can't live in reality. You have to see something that isn't there and then go after it. So, and I'm gonna bring this up because yes, you had a strategy. I'm selling a thousand people in attendance to a group that I haven't got yet. But I'm using that to get these high level influences. (laughs) <laughs> and once I got them, now I'm going back and I'm getting these thousand people that I sold in the front, but you saw it. And I, I just think it's so important. And maybe you could just, just put the cherry on top with this point I'm making. I think we all make it so much more harder on ourselves because we live in the confines of what is real today. Yeah. And not what could be real if you just went after it and just said, I don't care what the rules are. They don't apply to me. I see myself living in a certain crib in a certain neighborhood in a certain zip code with a certain amount of zeros in my bank account. I know I don't have them today, but that is just what I see and I'm going after it. Yeah. Um, I, I think, remember I said that I was inspired to do the conference because I went to a conference where it was done. So I was in an environment where I saw it, which made me believe, whoa, this is possible. Mm -hmm. I could do it. Oh, oh, they actually came. I'm going to do it. Get this. So my goal was a thousand. We had about 550 at the first conference when I thought there was going to be a thousand. This is year one. Year one. Mm-hmm. And then year two, it got kind of funky. We had like 300 or something because we had, to, obviously, COVID hit. Yep. Mid-conference. But it worked out. So we did like a virtual thing. It, it worked out. It wasn't bad. But I, I believed I could do it once I saw it. And I was in the environment of somebody who did it. So if I can leave everybody with anything um, as we wrap it up, you got to get in the environment. That's why you see all this stuff coming from Atlanta as the environment. There's so many black entrepreneurs out here. Any networking event, like you go to a, a lounge or a club, it's a networking event because you'll see somebody in there that's doing something and just being connected. The environment, your environment is everything. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.